Hi everyone, it's Miss Kim and I'm coming to you from the castle room and I thought we would talk today about Earth Day. Earth Day happens every year um, in late April. It was instituted in 1970. So um, last year we had the 50th anniversary of um, Earth Day. And it was to bring attention to the state of the earth and what's happening with the earth. And you can visit earthday.org slash actions to um, find out more information and to make a plan as to something that you will do to help the earth. So I thought I'd give you a little bit more information and then share some of the books that we have here at the library that are related to Earth Day. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about this. The three R's, re reuse, reduce, and recycle. And you may have seen one of these symbols somewhere. Let me show it to you. Well, I guess it's not in this book. It must be in another one. So I'll have to look in another one. But um, it's the three arrows that go around like this. So you may see something like this. And that stands for the three R's. Reuse, reduce, and recycle. And let me tell you a little bit about the top five recyclables. Papers and newspapers are number one. And each ton of recyclable paper saves 17 trees. So when you take something like your office paper, newspapers, flyers that you get, catalogs, they all count. Aluminum cans. Recycling one can saves a lot of energy, enough to watch TV for three hours. Plastic bottles. Americans use about four million plastic bottles each day. And in this book, Water Pollution, it actually shows it's an AV2, so there's more information. But it shows where there is a giant plastic, um, let's see, what do they call it? Great Pacific Garbage Patch. You can see it's here. And it was in the 1980s to the current. And it's located in the Pacific Ocean. And it's from trash dumping, trash from ships, and sources on land. And it collects in an area the size of Texas. So because of the water currents, it's all collecting in one area. And this book has a lot about water pollution in it. And one of the things that you can do to help with water pollution is use a recyclable water bottle instead of a plastic one. And I know that's hard because plastic's easy and especially if you're um, out somewhere and you need to have a drink, but you can kind of think ahead and think about um, a refillable water bottle. There's, you can also recycle glass and it's a good idea if you're going to do that to clean your glass out, like rinse out your container. You can also recycle batteries because what's in batteries, there's chemicals in there. And if they get into the regular trash, they, they're they not good for us. So um, I don't know if you've driven up past the landfill on Route 15 towards Williamsport, but you can see in the trees, there's all these plastic bags now that the leaves aren't on the trees, but they're stuck in there because that is a big landfill, which a landfill is a hole that we dig and we bury our trash in layers. And they do a really good job at managing it. But again, our trash is buried in the ground. 
And one of the things that you can do on the birthday.org slash actions is you can commit to using a um, take along bag when you go to the store. So um, it's just something that you can do to reduce and help the earth. So I'm going to share some books with you. This one's called Waste and it's an AV2, but it's all about how we manage garbage. And you can see there's like a timeline for waste through history. Um, there's a lot of good information in it. Working in trash and a recycling collection. That can be a career that you can do. I know we don't want to think about that as a career, but um, we all need our trash to go somewhere. And we need to do as much as possible to help recycle it. And these are, um, this is the Magic School Bus Gets Recycled. And they actually visit a recycling center. I don't think Northumberland's is open any longer, but the Glass Center, I think um, the Kiwanis helped with that and, and various other organizations. But you can go over to Sunbury. I know um, I live in Watson Town and I go to Milton, which has a recycling center behind um, the hands up place. You can also um, use things that other people have given you, like say your clothes are too small, you've grown. So you can pass them on to someone else. Um, your bicycle is too small for you. You can pass it on to someone else. These are some other books that are here at the library. This one's called Recycled Science. So it's science experiments that you can do with some things that you would use for recycling. This is called Recraft. It's unique projects that look great and save the planet too. So you can see they have one in here. Here's a dream catcher. This one's called I Am Not a Box. So since we're all doing a lot more online ordering, I know my house we are, um, I always have cardboard. So these are some things that you can do with boxes. I am not a paper roll. And again, the cardboard tubes that we've done lots of activities with gives you some more ideas for them. And composting nature's recyclers. And this um, talks about like how to compost your um, your vegetable trash or your um, like what you don't eat, like your banana peels or your skins of apples or things like that. And it shows that you can make compost in a bag. I also say if you don't have an area in your yard. I also saw one, um, it was on Pinterest, and it was compost um, in a two liter bottle. And what happens is it breaks down and eventually you get new soil that you can use as potting soil for things. So I all have those books on display in the circus room if you wanna check them out. And we're going to read the three R's, reuse, reduce, and recycle. by Nuria Roca, illustrations by Rosa M. Curto. Do you know the letter R? It is the first letter in three words that teach different ways to fight pollution. It is the R in reduce, reuse, reduce, and recycle. Do you know what these words mean? Reuse things that are still in good shape, such as your big brother's jacket. Reduce the amount of things we throw away, such as paper cups. Recycle old things to make new ones, such as a puppet out of an old sock. 
In the town where Paul lives, people throw their garbage bags into a garbage container at the corner. In the morning, a garbage truck empties the container and takes the garbage bags. Do you know where? They're taking their trash out. To a gar garbage landfill or dump, which is a huge place in the mountains or in the countryside far from the city. This shows a picture uh, of the landfill. I don't think it quite looks quite as bad as this right now, but let's see what happens. In Paul's town, however, there are so many people and so much garbage is produced that every landfill is full already and nobody knows where to build another. So they have built a huge furnace called an incinerator to burn all the waste materials. Nobody likes to live close by. People think the smoke coming out of the chimney is harmful to pets, animals, and people. And you may have heard something about some incinerators in our area. At Paul's school, they talked about the huge amount of waste produced in just one day. And they have decided to use, reuse as many things as they can. That means now they, use, they will use every object many times until it breaks or cannot be used anymore. At his school, they paint on both sides of all sheets of paper, use the empty cans of paint to keep paper clips and rubber bands, and use the pieces of craft paper left over to make collages. Do you have any other ideas? You can see some of the things that they're reusing things for. Lots of good ideas there. At home, everybody reuses as many things as possible. Paul wears the t-shirts that his big brother has outgrown and also plays with many of his old toys. Can you guess how many objects on the right may be used over and over? So what do you think could be used over and over? Do you think all of those things could be used over and over? I think most of them can. Something else we do at home in school is trying to waste, not to waste water or electricity because this way we can take care of our planet. It seems eh, very little but the drops of water from a leaking faucet could fill up a bathtub in one day. So the water, so keep the water and lights off when they are not needed. And remember when you're brushing your teeth to just wet your brush, then turn the water off while you brush, then turn it back on when you're ready to rinse. And it says you can take shorter showers too. When Paul and his family go shopping for food, they take their own baskets or bags made of cloth. By doing that, they won't have to ask for plastic or paper at the supermarket and will reduce the amount of plastic and paper made by factories. Reducing means using very little, only what is needed. You can see they have their own bags. Well, mom has a purse, but it looks like dad has the bag. And I'm going to try to get better with that because I'm not great with that. Plastic bags are very handy, but sometimes they end up in the sea where they can be dangerous for animals. Turtles may take them for jellyfish and eat them, or they may get tangled up in the plastic rings used to hold cans together. It's very important not to litter the ground, the woods, the beach, the ocean, or the city. You can see they're doing a beach cleanup. And I think that just happened at our river. Um, there was a river cleanup. At Paul's school, they throw all paper and cardboard into a special street container. Then trucks pick up everything and take it to a paper mill, where used paper and cardboard is shredded and washed into a pulp that is wet and soft. With this pulp, they make paper again. When it gets dry, we have recycled paper. 
So this shows you the process of doing that. And at the library, we have a um, recyclable container. It gets picked up once a month. Practically everything can be recycled. Paper and cardboard, plastic objects, glass, cans, all these things are first shredded, ground, or pulped. And then they go through different processes that make new drinking cans, glass bottles, and plastic containers. It says, at school, we make paper paste out of torn and wet old papers. Paul's parents have told him that food scraps can also be recycled. And that's where the word compost comes in. The banana peels and lemon rinds Paul has just thrown into the garbage may become food for plants, like all good food scraps. That's great. What can be recycled? Look at that, you can decide what can be recycled. But if we want to recycle, we have to put the waste in special containers. Now in the kitchen at Paul's home, there is a container for things made of plastic, metal, or glass, and another for the other garbage. Also, all newspapers and magazines are neatly tied in packages so they can be recycled. Let's see, they have their different systems. Because when you get to the recycling center, you need to put it in different places, so have different containers. Some of you may um, already help your parents with that. At sc some schools, they also collect old batteries. The children have been told batteries may not be recycled and that they pollute a lot. So it's very important not to throw them in the garbage. That's why the children have made a special container for them. Once it's full, they'll take it to a recycling center where the metal from the batteries will be used to make new ones. The drawings decorate the container. That would be a great project for someone to do. If we waste less and recycle all we can, there will be less pollution and we will be able to live for a long time in our little planet, breathing smokeless air, swimming in clear waters, and strolling through woods and countrysides free from garbage. Paul thinks it's worth the effort. How about you? And this gives you some idea for some projects that you can do that aren't recyclable. There's even an experiment in the back. So I'll have these books sitting out. And happy Earth Day, everyone. Take care of our planet. It's the only one we got.